In this video, I will show how I connected my ESC to my electric longboard. I will show how the new Kokama is connected to it. And I will also show a recent addition, which is a connection to VS2812 addressable LEDs. So this is the receiver from the new Kokama, which is connected directly to the I2C port. I took it apart and sold the wires to it to save some space. This connector, which uses the three wires, this is connected to the Hall sensor connector, by the way is for the VS2812 LEDs. So, let's put it together. Close it. And plug it in. And let the camera refocus. And as soon as I switch on the nunchuck, you can see that the LEDs are switching on. And uh, I have brake lights, turn lights, and I can also control the motor, of course. And there are some white LEDs in the front. They aren't affected by braking, but they do have the turn lights in front as well. This is what the whole assembly looks like, by the way. I kind of have a waterproof box for the EC, but the batteries are quite exposed. But uh, as soon as I don't hit any big rocks or something, I think they might survive. <coughs> right now, I don't have any ramping switch on for an untrack, so the throttle is quite aggressive. So if I simply make a small movement on the stick, it re reacts right away. And if you aren't prepared for that, you can uh, fall off. So one of the recent additions that can be activated from GUI is uh, ramping. And uh, let's give that a try. Just put it back on my desk and let's open the box and plug in a USB cable. And at this point, I can go to the DC tool, the configuration grid. Let's see, let's let it focus and switch off auto focus. And if it connect, you see that it's connected. That's disabled the nunchuck for now, so I can show some features. Well, it's connected, and the coded Y axis value is ticked. You can see when I move the nunchuck, that this bar, the slider changes. And if I enable it again, and write the configuration, I missed, can con control the motor like that. And there are some new settings. So, there's one, actually two different uh, ramping time coefficients. One that uh, is active when uh, moving away from zero torque, and one that's, uh, that is used when moving towards zero torque. So this one is used uh, when accelerating or braking, and this one is used when simply releasing the throttle and going back to zero torque. So, for the sake of demonstration, let's uh, make them very long. So let's put this one to two seconds, this one to one second. I usually have the second one about half the first one because for some reason that feels quite natural. I write the configuration. And if we go back to and have a look at the motor now, switch on server focus again. See that it's a lot slower. So the reaction is uh, delayed. And also when I'm breaking. But uh, having it to two seconds is, uh, I think it's a bit, or quite a lot, too slow. So what feels natural for me is having the positive limit at half a second and the negative one at uh, 0.2 seconds. And this will result in, it will be quite responsive. But not as aggressive as before when uh, the 
position of the Nantrex is simply co uh, corresponded to the current command without any delay at all whatsoever. Another thing that can be done, a recent addition, is if we go back to the GUI, you can see that the control mode right now is current. We can set it to current with reverse. And if I use this mode, I can reverse the direction of the motor with the C uh, Z button. And if you have a look at the LEDs, you can see that uh, once you push it, this becomes the front, and the motor changes direction, and vice versa. So if you go in this direction, so that's how it works. Let's uh, unplug the USB and put it together again and give it another try. So let's give that a try. What can notice now is that the throttle response is not as aggressive. So if I give full throttle right away at once, it will be quite smooth, unlike before. And the next thing is now that I have activated reverse, I can use the Z button and when I push it, I guess it does become red and the front becomes white. And now this is the front. So the action of the command of the stick is always the same. That reverse, putting it backwards, is always braking and putting it forwards is accelerating in the direction that currently is the front or in this case the one with the white light. So if I accelerate now We'll go in back. And if I change direction here and accelerate, it will first break and then start in the other direction. I can always, regardless of the direction, I can always break the same way. So if I go in that direction and do braking, change, I can still break the same way. So another feature I've implemented is cruise control using the C button. So if I simply move the wheel and push C, it will try to maintain the current speed. I can also lower it a bit. And if I put some load on the wheel, it will detect that the motor is going slower and apply more throttle to maintain the same speed. And also if I try to make it a bit slower, if I try to turn it faster, it will uh, use redundant braking to slow down. So you can even use this when you're going downhill. Also by using cruise control, you can still use the throttle, so you can accelerate and keep the new speed, or brake. And it should also be safe if you have to change direction while using it. If you release it, it will simply, you simply have to activate it again, but in other direction. Let's try that. Regarding direction change. I also try to make sure that uh, if you have full speed in one direction and change direction and try accelerate in the other direction, it won't do anything crazy. So the first thing it will do, it will apply brake with the force corresponding to the throttle. And once you have stopped, it will uh, accelerate in the other direction. So let's give it a try on the bench and then on the floor. So now I will accelerate in that direction, change direction before I was stopped, and try to accelerate in the other direction. And again. Oh, 